Welcome back to another stock analysis, where I look at some key matrix to calculate the fair value and my buy price for the stock. Today I'm going to analyze ADP, which is one of the biggest companies in the industrial sector. Last, they generated a revenue of $16.5 billion and they have a market capitalization of $109 billion. ADP made their money by helping companies manage their employees, benefits, payrolls and other things. The revenue of ADP can be divided into four main segments, which are human capital management with 43%, HR outsourcing and professional employer organization with 40%, global with 14%, and interest of funds held by clients with 3%. Regarding the geographical diversification of the company, it is informed that 88% of the revenue is made in North America, 8% in Europe, 2% in Canada, and 2% in other countries. If you want to know the exact numbers of how the revenue is divided, you can check out the annual report of ADP, which I have linked down below. Enough about introduction, let's find out if ADP is a good stock to buy at its current value. To find out if the price of the stock is interesting, I usually use the dividend yield. To start with, I plot the dividend yield for the last few years in a historical chart. To create some sort of signal line, I plot the 5 years moving average of the dividend yield too. The whole idea behind this chart is that the stock seems overvalued when the yield is under the moving average, and vice versa, the stock seems undervalued when the yield is over the moving average. The weighting approach, of course, only makes sense when the company can demonstrate a long and sustainable dividend history. The average of the last 5 years for ADP is 1.99% and I would like to define this as the historical dividend yield. Since my weighting model is based on the historical yield, it should be as stable as possible. Mathematically, I can calculate how stable this matrix is by calculating the relative standard deviation, which for ADP is 10.8%. To the historical yield, I have a personal defined marginal safety of 25%. This marginal safety will be adjusted upwards or downwards depending on the matrix of the company. My first criteria is the stability of the dividend measured with the relative standard deviation. With this value I can measure how volatile the dividend yield is. A high relative standard deviation would higher my risk to invest at a bad timing. As said earlier, the relative standard deviation for ADP is 10.8%. And this value is inside the yellow section of our weighting scale, which gives no further adjustment to the marginal safety. The next important matrix for me is the dividend growth. In 2007, 71 cents were paid, and currently the yearly dividend is $4.16. The dividend growth of the last 5 years is thereby calculated to be 13.2%. The company also has a fairly long dividend history, and actually earned the title Dividend Aristocrat, which means they have paid and increased the dividend for at least 25 consecutive years. To be precise, ADP has paid and increased the dividend for 47 consecutive years. Anyway, a dividend growth of 13.2% is inside the dark green section of a rating scale, which means I subtract 10% from the marginal safety. But if you want to investigate whether the dividend growth is sustainable for the company or not, the payout ratio should be evaluated. I always look at the payout ratio in respect to the free cash flow, which is the cash flow the company has available after they've paid all necessary expenses. The free cash flow from ADP has increased from $2.5 billion in 2019 to $2.9 billion in 2022. The cash dividend were respectively $1.3 billion and $1.8 billion. The average payout ratio thereby becomes 56%. And this value is once again in the yellow section of a rating scale, which gives no further adjustment to the marginal safety. Before we continue the analysis, I would like to remind you that if you like my stock analysis, you can support the channel by liking the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you also would like to support me financially, you can check out the links in the video description, where you can open up new portfolios or buy some great investor books. With that being said, you can of course also just continue to watch my videos, which is a huge support already. But now, let's get back to the analysis. Next, I'll take a look at the debt situation. The company has a debt of $0.4 billion and has $1.44 billion in cash. When the cash gets subtracted from the debt, and this value then gets divided by the EBITDA, 
the debt to equity ratio is found. The EBITDA is currently at $4.3 billion. But since the company has more available cash, the debt, the debt to equity ratio becomes zero automatically. This matrix tells us that the company could pay off the whole debt at any time if they wanted to. This matrix is of course inside the green section of a rating scale and therefore I subtract 5% from the marginal safety. For the business to be sustainable, growth is a very important factor. The revenue has increased from $13.3 billion in 2018 to $16.5 billion in 2022. This gives an average growth of 5.5%. In the same period of time, the EBIT increased from $2.5 billion to $3.9 billion, which gives an average growth of 11.4%. The margin is found by dividing the EBIT with the revenue, which in 2018 gives 18.9% and in 2022 increased to 23.5%. Since the EBIT increases at a higher rate than the revenue, it only makes sense that the profitability of the company increases. In this case, it increases with 5.6% in average. An EBIT growth of 11.4% is inside the dark green section of a rating scale, which gives a minus 10%. For an average margin growth of 5.6%, I'll subtract further 5% from the marginal safety. When the aim of an investment is to buy and hold the stock for decades, it makes sense to relate the current dividend yield and the dividend growth. I do this by calculating the potential yield on cost. The company currently has a dividend yield of 1.62%, and as mentioned earlier, the dividend growth for the last 5 years is 13.2%. To really take advantage of the snowball effect that investing offers, I reinvest every dividend payment. But since there are 15% withholding taxes for stocks from the US, I subtract 15% from every dividend payment. Thereby, the potential yield and cost after 5 years would be 3.4%, after 10 years it would be 7.6%, and after 15 years it would be 20.5%. And of course, it is difficult to predict the future, if not impossible. But this matrix still gives a general idea where the potential yield and cost is going and what annual income I could expect in a few years. A potential yield and cost of 20.5% is in the yellow section of a rating scale. Therefore, the marginal safety doesn't change. Since every matrix from my analysis has now been collected, it is time to adjust the marginal safety. Minus 10% for the dividend growth, minus 5% for the debt, minus 10% for the EBIT growth, and minus 5% for the margin growth. Thereby, the new marginal safety becomes minus 5%. This leads to a desired dividend yield of 1.89%. And by a current dividend of $4.16, I should therefore don't pay more than $220 for the stock. By ignoring the marginal safety, the fair price of the stock is determined, which for ADP is $209. These values can also be shown graphically in a chart for the historical dividend yield. This is done by adding the marginal safety to the historical yield curve. This then gives a new curve which always lies 5% under the historical yield. As seen in the graph, the yield curve is under the historical yield and the marginal safety curve. Therefore, I consider the stock as overvalued. Finally, I consider the stock at its fair value when the price is $209. I would buy the stock at $220 and the stock price is currently at $263. That's it for today's video and thank you for watching.